I am very interested in solar panels right now. The main reason being the financial benefits that I can provide families who install solar on their home. But I know that like everything in life, there are pros and cons. And this is the second video to a three video series that I'm doing on solar. First one focused on pros and cons of solar. This one I'm doing pros and cons again, but specifically focused on the environment. Now I'm not naive enough to think that solar panels are gonna save the environment as it stands right now or save the world, but I was curious to dig in a little bit deeper and figure out if they are everything that they've been hyped up to be. All right, here's a summary of what I found. I'm gonna start with the pros of solar for the environment. Number one, reduced greenhouse gas emissions seems fairly obvious. But keep in mind, that's only while it's producing energy. Greenhouse gases are emitted in order to obtain the materials needed and create the solar panels we use. But the good news is that once they're made, no more emissions are being created. Number two is reduced water usage. This is something I was not aware of, but coal-fired plants, natural gas power plants, and nuclear power plants often use water for various reasons. Some of those reasons are cooling, steam generation, fuel extraction, and emissions controls. At first, I was thinking it's not a big deal if that water is recycled or if it's put back into the environment when it's clean, but this can have a significant impact on the environment. For example, the discharge of heated water into water bodies can seriously disrupt the aquatic ecosystem. Number three is clean air. Traditional energy sources such as coal and natural gas release harmful pollutants when burned. Solar energy production avoids these emissions leading to cleaner air, which is a big benefit for the environment, but especially all of the species that have to breathe in that air, us being one of those species. Number four is reduced land use. Now, if you've seen solar farms, you're probably thinking that I'm a little crazy, but what I'm referring to here is the fact that solar panels can be installed on rooftops. Solar is the only power plant, quote unquote, that you can install directly on your house. All right, let's move into some cons of solar on the environment now. Number one is manufacturing. The production of solar panels involves the extraction and processing of raw materials such as silicon, glass, and metals. The extraction process can have environmental consequences including habitat destruction and water pollution. Additionally, the manufacturing process requires energy, often driven from fossil fuels, as I mentioned, which contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. Number two is rare materials. Some types of solar panels require rare earth elements like indium, gallium, and selenium. The extraction and refining of these materials can result in environmental damage and pollution. However, all three of these materials are byproducts. Indium is a byproduct of zinc mining. Gallium is a byproduct of aluminum and zinc production. And selenium is a byproduct of copper refining. I left it on this list, but I almost removed it because the other materials are already being mined for various things. So this is not just for solar panels. Number three is land use and habitat impact. I know I had a pro that there is reduced land use, but I had to put this one as a con as well when solar farms are used. Solar farms require significant land area to install a large number of panels. In some cases, this can lead to deforestation, habitat fragmentation, and displacement of wildlife. But this only happens with improper site selection. So in these cases, it can have a negative ecological consequence. However, in other cases, it may be absolutely fine. Number four is energy intensive production. I've already alluded to this. Although solar panels generate clean energy during their operational life, the energy required for their production, transportation, and installation can have a large carbon footprint and other environmental impacts. They will eventually offset that energy. However, it is something we need to consider. 
Personally, after working through all these pros and cons, I'm not convinced that solar is the end all be all. It's the answer to all of our problems, but it is something that can definitely help. It is part of a bigger system and that's how we need to look at it. It's not all or nothing, get rid of some things and implement the things that we like. We need to understand everything and how it works as a whole. It is a little bit of everything and transitioning to those things that work much better for what our goals are and what our problems are that we need to solve. Additionally, in my personal opinion, I believe we also need to be focused on capturing carbon and not just reducing carbon. Once again, it's not all or nothing. It's working with both. You could put solar panels on your home and plant a food forest in your yard instead of having grass that gets sprayed with chemicals, requires energy to cut, and too much water to grow. That's how we make change. Consistent action, one step at a time. Now, if you are a homeowner and you live in the US and you are interested in solar, here's some food for thought. Did you know that utility prices have increased by 20% on average in the last 10 years in the US? If you live in the US and want to beat the utility company at their own game, I partnered with Apricot Solar and Freedom Forever to save you thousands of dollars. Because of high tax incentives and solar decreasing in costs by 50% over the last 10 years, there has never been a better time to add solar to your home. If you're interested in seeing if your home qualifies, head to theconsciousbuilder.com solar. And if you're concerned about upfront costs, don't worry because we have financing options that require $0 down. Once again, that is theconsciousbuilder.com slash solar to see if your home qualifies.